Pectus Warriors, what's going on? It's Riley Byrne from FixPectus.com. And in today's video, what I wanted to talk about is how someone with Pectus should train that's different to how someone without Pectus should train. So I just wrapped up uh, a push workout. So this is part of my split and I'm gonna overlay as I speak my push workout so you guys can have a look at some of the exercises I do in my training. Now I'm someone with Pectus, okay? But I also have buddies who train and we do the exact same things. But then sometimes with Pectus there is a need for a differentiation in your programming, in your exercise selection, in comparison to someone who wouldn't have Pectus. So let me talk about firstly why you should train differently to someone without Pectus and, and how. So why should, what are the variances in programming? Firstly, something that is more applicable as you're a beginner with Pectus. So when you have Pectus and you haven't started weight training or you're in your first year um, of weight training, that's when there should be more variance in your programming in comparison to someone without Pectus. Because someone without Pectus isn't gonna have tight chest muscles that are associated with the condition. So the biggest variance would be the amount of back and postural work you need to do, the amount of face pulls, rear delt work that you need to do in comparison to someone without it. That being said though, modern daily habits, sedentary habits of sitting at a desk, driving, playing video games, the person without pectus more than likely also has that kyphotic posture. So more than likely both someone with and without pectus who is a beginner should be doing more than back. So again, there's probably little variance there, but it's just more of a premise for someone with pectus because we know 100% that you're gonna have that kyphotic posture, which I've talked about so much. So that's one big difference when it comes to programming for pectus. The next difference when it comes to programming for pectus, and this is applicable across all levels of experience, whether you're a beginner or someone advanced, is pectus specialized exercises, AKA chest exercises that target the inner chest fibers. So this is something that I've done and spent the last like honest four years of training focusing on, is the development of the fibers in and around the indentation. And this isn't so much about exercises, but it's about exercise execution. It's about mind to muscle connection and learning how to execute to target those fibers and to activate them more. So for example, the landmine press, it's great for it, but if you do the landmine press like this, you're not really gonna be targeting in there at all. You want to hold tight, squeeze through and press. Look at the muscle fiber activation as I do that, just straight away, just holding that contraction. It's activating and then we push, okay? So it's, it's about exercise execution and selection as well for pectus. Someone without pectus, they probably don't need to do that because they don't have the indent there and it's not as much of a concern. That being said though, someone without pectus, I'd recommend you using the landmine press and other exercises as well because like a, developing just an overall muscle mass across your chest is key. But with pectus, there's some things that I, I, I'm very nitty gritty about. Um, things like the dumbbell pullover, landmine press. I like to do these fly movements where you're coming in and squeezing the standing dumbbell fly, which I've talked about before as well. That's literally just about all there is in regards to variance for pectus. Now, people who are on the beginner, um, people who I have on the pectus transformation project begin again. Another thing that I have them doing other than a lot of postural work is our uh, unilateral work because pectus is typ typically quite asymmetric, meaning one chest is typically bigger, uh, the indent goes to one more side or whatever. So we do a lot of unilateral work to try our best to even out the imbalances as best we can. But that being said, your muscles insert and they originate, the origins and insertions of your muscles are the way they are. So there's not really much we can change there, but what we can do is develop any actual muscular size imbalances and just help create some symmetry between your muscles. So that's another thing I do because I know pectus is quite asymmetric a lot of the time. So there's a lot, a lot of unilateral movements for my beginners. But if you have pectus or if you don't have pectus, the effective training protocols, compound movements, progressive overload, um, they all remain constant. Like, just because you're pectus doesn't mean you have to train a whole nother way. And I got a question uh, the other day as well. It was, um, because I have pectus, it's harder to gain muscle, right? And th th there's no backing to that. That is not true at all. The only thing that has any relevance to that is pectus is commonly associated with ectomorph, so the body type where you have a fast metabolism and you're very skinny. Um, there's just that. From what I've seen with people who've reached out to me, that's the most common body type that has pectus. And so for ectomorphs, it's harder to gain muscle just because their caloric expenditure at rest is typically higher. And so um, 
it's harder to be in a caloric surplus, which is what warrants muscle growth. So that's the only thing there. It's not because you have pectus that all of a sudden you can't build muscle. It's not because you have pectus that you can't build your chest muscle. People with pectus have just as much capacity to build muscle as people without pectus. They're just ectomorphs, yeah? Um, but that being said, there's also plenty of mesomorphs. I've had plenty of people who are overweight with pectus who want to lose the fat and the pot belly to help make their pectus look better as well. So people come in all shapes and sizes, guys. And um, programming also needs to vary per the individual where they're at. If they're a beginner, if they're intermediate, uh, what their genetics are, um, what their preferences are, if they can train this many days a week, etc. But just to sum this video up, pectus only slight variance in programming would be like the main slight variances in the programming would be inner chest and focus on the the back. Uh, but that's about it. Proper like it's it's all about overall proper effective training and programming and. Um, Focusing on progressive overload, that's a huge thing. And then nutrition, guys, it's funny, like nutrition is like the most, one of the most important things. And that's why I feel like no one really understands that. And I've tried to simplify it as best I can. In my previous video, the nutrition video, I talk about it, but I still feel like people are confused on that topic. So um, that's why it's good to have a coach. That's why it's good to have me. Sign up for the Pectus Transformation Project and actually get results. Like, stop wasting your time, guys. You've been watching my videos for a long time now and you're not seeing changes. You need me to hold you accountable and you need me to program. Pro pro you don't need me, actually. I take that back. But you should utilize me because you're going to save yourself time and effort and you're going to be able to achieve the body of your dreams. But anyway, I hope this video helped clarify some things and. Um, yeah, comment below. Keep commenting video suggestions, guys. I've got the anterior pelvic tilt one coming. Um, and yeah, the more video suggestions you give me, the better. Peace.